Today, we're going to talk about Werner Herzog's 2005 film, Grizzly Man. The film is a documentary in a loose sense, but before we get to the movie, let's hear a few words from our sponsor, Werner Herzog. Now, if you're a film buff, you probably know about Werner Herzog, but if you're like me and you don't give two shits about an old white man, allow me to tell you. Herzog is known for his unique film styles where the production is as complex as the product. He calls himself a storyteller rather than a documentarian and seeks stories of humans pushed to extremes. There's so much more I could say about Werner Herzog. However, he is not who this video is about. We're here to talk about Timothy Treadwell. Timothy Treadwell was an animal conservationist, an actor who lived with bears for 13 consecutive summers. Sadly, he would be killed by a bear in 2003, along with his girlfriend, Amy Huguenard. Before I dive into the film, I want you to look at the poster. I want you to think about the title. The merging of grizzly bear and man. Treadwell and the bear sharing the same space on the poster. I want you to think about the tagline. Treadwell was obsessed with starting over, or at least that's the story Herzog has decided to tell about him, but we'll stick with it for now. I've divided Treadwell's life into three lives, his first life as an all-American boy, his second life as a struggling actor, and his third life as an activist. His first life ended when he got into drugs and alcohol and moved to California, where he started his second life as an aspiring actor. His second life was full of ups and downs, and his struggle with alcohol continued. After a near-fatal overdose, something clicked, and he started his third life with the bears, the subject of Herzog's film. Much like the people living outside civilization in Neptune Frost, Treadwell was free without the judgment and rules of the human world. In both films, civilization sought after the protagonists and intruded on their sanctuary with weapons and opinions. Treadwell had a penchant for taking risks, and he sought to make something of himself, and met so much resistance in his first and second lives that it nearly killed him. That's why I find it almost poetic that he died on his third life, after he'd spent 13 years making a difference. His extreme love for animals led him to teach at schools and educate the public about his perceived nemesis, poachers. One of the main questions I find in Her Herzog's film is whether Treadwell was truly doing good or whether he had settled into a delusion of importance. The public's judgment of Treadwell is what drove him to the bears, and it is what lives on after his death. The talking heads that make up Herzog's film come from his friends, family, and acquaintances. His parents describe his perfectly normal childhood and his love of animals, but they imply that Timothy started struggling once he left for college and got a real taste of the world, implying that his hopes and childlike enthusiasm had been pushed to its limit. Friends describe him as a loving but troubled person who was medicated for a time but stopped because he needed the highs and lows. Accounts like this, and the general fact that he lived with bears for 13 years, feeds the opinion that he must have been mentally ill. Even news anchors question his sanity to his face. Herzog includes a clip in the film of Treadwell quoting acquaintances' sly jabs and disrespect for him. Ah, Timothy, I'm getting a bad feeling about you. He only has mockery and contempt for it. Oh, I saw you on David Letterman. You're <laughs> fairly entertaining. His rage is almost incandescent artistic. The clip has been edited with so much intent to show Timothy's anger toward these people that it almost feels fake. In the film, Herzog visits the Aludic Museum, and the curator tells him about the relationship between the Aludic people and bears. Like most human societies, the Aludic people have always been wary of bears as a dangerous predator. Other cultures have histories of torturing bears or glorifying killing them. At some point in the evolution of weapons, bears became a bit easier to kill and a bit less scary. There seems to be a sense that Treadwell wanted to become a bear to transform into one. Despite some Greek myths that mention that as punishment, the idea of transforming into another species is something beyond human capability. And this is where I think the myths about Treadwell start. He never mentions wanting to become a bear, only to spend time with them, to live in their society. To return to nature is not an unfamiliar concept, especially in the film Walkabout, where the allure of the natural world is explored in all its depth. Treadwell would have been growing up when that film came out, so the idea of rejecting society may have been a familiar one. That isn't to say he was familiar with Walkabout, but the idea was likely popular. 
There is a scene in Walkabout where the girl has returned to modern society, but sighs fondly and remembers her time on the outback. This reminds me of a moment in Timothy's journal, just months before his death, where he explains that he got to the airport in California and immediately turned around and went back to Alaska after being around people again. The lure of simple existence without the complexities of stupid human life is something most people have probably desired at some point. Thus, Treadwell's modern myth is extremely compelling for audiences and filmmakers. I can't help but think of the 2003 Disney animated movie Brother Bear. The film came out just a month after Treadwell died, and obviously they weren't connected, but bears were clearly a focus in American consciousness at the time. I was only a few months old when it came out, but I watched the movie plenty growing up, so it changed how I viewed this film. It's possible that it influenced the public's view of Treadwell. Because of Treadwell's posthumous notoriety, the main discussion that erupted was on the morality of motivation. Beyond the tragedy, a grim fascination with blame captured the discourse. One side could claim that Treadwell was protecting the bears and not hurting anyone, while another side could cite the many national park rules he had broken. That is to say, either Treadwell was responsible for his own death because he broke a rule, or the bear is responsible because that's nature. Treadwell had said to his friends that he would be at peace dying among the bears, but that concept didn't sit with the public. People wanted to condemn him, citing societal rules and constructs and judging him insane. But Treadwell had only left civilization to escape judgment, to do good in his eyes. His motivations are as complex and contradictory as any person's. It's only because of Herzog that we sit here trying to parse them out. And doesn't it seem a bit cruel of him to put Timmy in the spotlight and leave him to be eternally judged? Herzog holds complete control as the filmmaker over the audience's judgment of the subject, so much that the subtlest cut, movement, or expression could change the viewer's experience. Thus, Herzog must handle the film with a surgeon's caution. However, this varies on whether his goal is to tell the plain and simple tr truth or to tell a story. And as we've established, Herzog is a storyteller. Apparently, Herzog tended to influence scenes with notes about the feeling they should give, like telling a talking head to do a take with more sorrow. You can see this occasionally in the film, where friends and family will give an account with an unrealistic or unnatural cadence, like they've been practicing. However, I think the film's heavy reliance on Treadwell's archival footage forgives whatever stories Herzog invents or influences. Herzog builds fiction from nonfiction, the same way centuries of people have created myths. His story, shown clearly on the poster, is of Treadwell sharing a space with a bear, but simultaneously standing up against it. Herzog frames the film like a puzzle, where Treadwell's tapes are scrambled pieces of a complex mind. Herzog tries to put together the pieces, aligning edges and making connections, but the puzzle is never whole. Much like the film All Light Everywhere, there's always something missing from the picture. That film heavily focused on the effect that the frame and the camera person have on the audience, as things excluded. In Grizzly Man, the most poignant connection is Amy Huguenard. As the biggest unknown in the film, she exists off screen in many of the tapes, sometimes behind the camera but that doesn't make her disappear from the environment. Treadwell and the bears still know she's there, and the ground still feels her footprints. And her most lasting impact was dying beside him, yet she is almost wholly unseen and undiscussed. And from the perspective of the viewer, she's hardly there. Which is false. <laughs> it's a lie, an invention by Treadwell. But to fault him for it would be unfair. Treadwell's tapes were filmed to fit his ideas for a show or a presentation. He behaves like a filmmaker himself, including and excluding to fit his own narrative. It's difficult to wrap your head around Herzog's attempt as a filmmaker making a film about another filmmaker. But as I speak, I also choose what to say and what not to say about Herzog and Treadwell's processes. Like an onion, the whole thing has layers, and each creator is making something with their own intent something only they can know. So the picture will never be complete because we cannot read minds, just like we cannot turn into bears.
after editing this, I sort of looked back at the whole thing, and I just wanted to share my final thoughts. That, um, I think that over the course of this, I started to dislike Herzog more and more, because he states at some point in the film that he has this very pessimistic view of nature about it being brutal, and about, uh, like, the process of death, and, uh, it really contradicts with Treadwell's, like, hopeful view of, like, love among creatures, and I think that Herzog putting his own, um, opinion on, like, the brutality of nature and putting it onto Treadwell's life experience sort of feels wrong, in my opinion, because, like, Herzog didn't know Treadwell. He came in and heard about uh, Treadwell and his story and found it interesting, which is what, like, every audience member does. And that makes Herzog an audience member in a sort of sense, because he isn't really part of the story. He's sort of putting himself into it from this sort of, like, uh, sort of, like, god angle. Like, I mean in the sense that he's above the whole thing. He's outside of it. He doesn't interact with it. Aside from talking to the family members, he's not part of the tapes, which are the real story, in my opinion. And sort of by editing the clips in his own way, he's putting his own spin on Herzog's, on Treadwell's story. I'm just not sure if that sits right with me, because it sort of just feels invasive. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I feel like a lot of this stuff could have gone in my original video, but I, I didn't really think about it until the end. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.